What is up, spooky mates of YouTube? Marcel from Aussie Horror here. In today's little video, I've done another op shop haul. This one was nowhere near as successful as last time, but I still had a lot of fun making it. I picked up a couple of things. I only ended up spending about five bucks instead of 15 like last time. But I did get some cool things and I will be cutting this with some like b-roll of footage of when I was at the op shop. So if that sounds good to you, let's get into the video. Here's the bag, but don't let the size fool you. I didn't get that much stuff. I only got three DVDs and a book. I originally thought it was four DVDs, but it's four movies technically and a book, but three DVDs. You'll, you'll see in a second. So the first thing I picked up was Moonstruck, <laughs> one of Nicolas Cage's earliest films. All right, I know, <laughs> I know that might may sound really random, but if you've seen Nicolas Cage in A Vampire's Kiss, and that's one of his best performances, one of his most zany performances, you'll love him in Moonstruck. It kind of makes you realize how Nicolas Cage actually operated as a more serious, likable actor, and I love him for his goofy, zany Nicolas Cage and his Cageisms. What is life? I didn't come here to upset you. They say bread is life. And and I bake bread, 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 <clears throat> and I sweat and shovel this stinking dough in and out of this hot hole in the wall and and I should be so happy. Huh, sweetie? This is a much more romantic a wholesome movie and if you loved a vampire's kiss and you would rather watch a movie with a little less goofiness, then definitely check this one out. As a romantic comedy, it's pretty good. It's got that sort of slightly fantastical element as well, similar to A Vampire's Kiss. Cher is actually really good in this one as well, which is a sentence I would never have thought I would have ever said on YouTube, but here we are. So that is the first movie that I purchased. Next up is an Australian classic. I was surprised because when I thought back to it, I didn't actually own this one. It is the movie Takeaway. Now, if you're outside of Australia or New Zealand, you probably have not heard of this one. It's got Aussie actors in it. It's got Vince Colosimo, who was in Wog Boy. It's got Stephen Curry, who's an Aussie comedy icon. It's about two small rival takeaway places. One's like more of a burger shop and one's more of like a uh, Greek souvlaki shop basically and a fast food chain opens up right next to them and it's about the rivalry and it's about the two smaller uh, the smaller establishments teaming up against the big guns, the big chain and I highly recommend that if you're not well versed in Aussie films and if you're outside of Australia you know that's pretty much a guarantee and you like comedies please check this one out treasury is this. You have deigned to serve me a mouse fried in axle grease. I will have your hide for insolence, innkeeper. This isn't a horror movie, it isn't a sci-fi movie, it's not really what we typically feature on this channel, but I love this movie. It was one of my favorites growing up when I was a kid, and definitely check out Takeaway. It's a cracking Aussie comedy. Next up is a DVD that includes one movie that's actually related to the channel somewhat. It's a double feature, Loose Shoes with Bill Murray and Mazes and Monsters with Tom Hanks. Now this is one of Tom Hanks' earliest films and it's about like uh, a Dungeons and Dragons style game where it becomes real life. It's pretty goofy. I think I may have watched it when I was a kid because I went through this huge Tom Hanks phase. I love that movie, The Burbs. I would watch it with my dad all the time. And I also love Big. Everybody loves that movie. Anyways, Loose Shoes, I don't think I've seen, but I would love to watch Mazes and Monsters again. If you want to see a review of that, drop a comment below. Let me know if you want to see that review. What does it say? Bound, bound together by desire to play Mazes and Monsters, which is... Uh, Dungeons and Dragons style game in, in the movies universe. Robbie, played by Tom Hanks, and his four college classmates decide to move the board game into the local legendary cavern. Robbie starts having visions for real and the line between reality and fantasy fuse into a harrowing adventure. Robbie! 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 Pardue, what are you doing? 
going to join the Great Hall. You can't. It's a trap. I have spells. I'm going to fly. Now, even at his worst, Tom Hanks is a likable actor. So, I actually think it's kind of funny that this says, two great movies. Calling these great movies is probably inaccurate, but I mean, I paid a dollar for two movies, so I look forward to watching these again. And Mazes and Monsters, look at that font. Look at that font though. <laughs> it's the goofiest, cheapest font I've ever seen, but I love that. I look forward to watching these. And last but not least, as I always scour the book sections as well, I got Woody Guthrie's Bound for Glory. I love old folk music, Bob Dylan in particular, and Woody Guthrie, and I used to have a poster in my bedroom when I was a teenager with Woody Guthrie and his guitar that says, This Machine Kills Fascists on it. I always thought that was such a cool sentiment when I was a kid, like, yeah, kill fascists. I don't know why, I just thought that was really cool. Um, Woody Guthrie. His son, Arlo Guthrie, has some great albums as well. Check them out. And this book came in at $2. I've never seen it before, but as a big fan of Bob Dylan and Woody Guthrie in general, I had to have this one. Being a punk rock kid growing up, you sort of are tangentially related to the folk scene because there's like this rebellious quality to the folk scene as well, the American folk scene back then. And I love how on the back it says, one of the patron saints of American rebelliousness. I guess we're all sort of a rebel at heart, you know? Anyways, I didn't pick up too many movies. I saw, I did see like multiple copies of Blade 2 and Blade Trinity. I love those movies, but I already own them, so I didn't purchase them. And I even included a bit here, which I'll probably show at some point here, of me stacking them up in a line so I could show you guys. Okay, thanks. Oh, the whole lot. Yeah, well, the whole lot. Oh, cool. The, um, that was Anyways, uh, if you're keen to see more of these op shop videos, these haul videos, let me know in the comments below. You know, I had a lot of fun making this one. And until the next video, my name is Marcel from Aussie Horror, and I will catch you guys around. I did actually record some more footage that I didn't use in the main part of the video. Here's Cop Out, directed by Kevin Smith. It's not as bad as everyone says it is, and Sean William Scott's character in this, Stifler from American Pie, really saves it. Uh, here's one. Biodome with Pauly Shaw, one of the, arguably one of the worst movies ever made. Definitely check this one out, simply to say that you've watched one of the worst of all time. Here's an underrated video game movie, at least in my opinion, Doom with Carl Urban and The Rock. It's actually surprisingly good and has this amazing like five minute FPS sequence in it. Giant from 1956 has one of the greatest casts of all time. Rock Hudson, James Dean in his last picture and Elizabeth Taylor. It's a great movie. And lastly, we've got Insomnia, which is one of Christopher Nolan's earlier movies, and it's got a towering performance from Robin Williams in it. Check this one out.